Oh. I think I kind of want to go with Yuri this time. Start with Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Larry. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow riders. I know you're new to this, so don't worry too uh, so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid of to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't don't feel like you need to work your brain like a like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings, and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to uh, truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate, intimate ex exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is it the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. All right. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious still well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enlightening beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon and urge. The moon increments its face and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glisters in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotion onto, onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, a classic... Pavlovian conditioning? I, I'm not sure. I slice the bread and feed myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if, I'm, if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style using the poem as a canvas to express vivid inventory and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take take it as a take it at face value, then I can't even figure what this is supposed to be. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So sometimes I write, enjoy writing about them. <coughs> Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing and people will make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Larry? Well, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best way, the best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be writing all a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. I'm actually a good listener in real life as well, so it this feels natural to me. Not the key! Hmm... Well, it's not really any worse than your last one, but I can't really say it's any better either. 
Phew. Huh? Phew what? Uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment. <laughs> Glad you see you recognize my experience. Well, then keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's... Uh, something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Huh? You think so? Yeah, well I guess it's... I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck, struck me as her type. Sayori has a type of all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say that we, you could say we need to take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem, here. Alright. Natsuki, poem 2. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her, I heard her singing my favorite so love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the, of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies, it doesn't matter if she keeps it private, it doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross, she's gross, the world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm gonna tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short, I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like everyone would agree that the job of this poem is an incorrect jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that, that, um, la, la, la. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone, it, it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect each other for liking weird things. Ah, that's what funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her point was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well... I mean, Yuri is pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that uh, she has some uh, weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Mm. It's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I, I guess I sh should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels in insecure about her behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel in insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. 
But the way you put it sounds like she learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if, oh god it, even if her uh, writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotion is important. But I want to make pe people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. My throat is dying! Sayori! Larry, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh? I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one's too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean... You're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way! Not, not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much he likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write points when I'm thinking about you. <laughs> eh? Wow, 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 wow! Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make it ev make everything in your life like a life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not, not let let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I, I can feel more feelings through you than I uh, than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting into in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. Ah, you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? <laughs> I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey, I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. Sayori stands fidgeting with her pencil bit for her hands. Hey Larry, will you give me your poem? I kinda want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something from me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when you go home. Really? Snap. Ah, I broke my pencil. Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the pieces she stopped. But being a Hector Serenity bumps right into me. So, so sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I'm, I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. <coughs> Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little pause of sunshine. Oh. Wow. For some reason, I really have a hard time reading this. Little pause of sunshine. Or. Oh, I saw. Uh, Oh, no, right now I get it. It's kind of weird, this, hand, uh, this handwriting. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. A bundle of kittens. 
I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck out one. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottle, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle has a starlight to make a amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes the bottle to save my day. Night after night, more dreams, friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the rocks, nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scrapping and, uh, scrapping and scrapping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapses. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other. Holding them up to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the t uh, tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in charge all over the world. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who are, aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Damn. Holy crap. Sayori, so, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Ah, oh, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helped me understand my own feels a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've got a real passion about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this, this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Right, Monica time. Hi again, Larry. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come out with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't got on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori like the other one that you wrote. You two really are like a dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of like exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do a lot of, spend a lot of time with her, in the, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm, I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm, like, I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Ah, no, it's not like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it that, that like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, 
beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop, violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vi vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Hmm. It's even more struck than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of things that i never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how you space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes me... F the way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be an, as abstract as, as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when, you, or when something unexpected might happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What, not, what am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. <laughs>